Hello everyone, this is Tatiana and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will do a huge correction for my client and also deal with a terrible accident that happened to my client's pinky nail. Unfortunately, these kind of situations do happen, so it's good to know what you need to do if this does occur. After we completed this set that you see here, two weeks later, my dear client's pinky nail was torn off. It's probably not a good idea to play sports with extensions this long, and that's exactly how this happened to my client. The material didn't just break or crack, it completely detached from the nail bed. The most important thing right now is removing the length on this nail. I'm holding the upper part of her nail tightly, which is a little painful but is necessary. Otherwise, the nail will be moving on the nail bed. I'm not moving my finger from her nail but continuing to hold tightly and in place while removing the free edge, which is very important. Further, I sprayed an antiseptic all around her nail and placed a band-aid over it. Then I explained to my client how to further take care of her nail at home. Once her nail has healed more and isn't as sensitive, we'll be able to remove more of the material. A couple weeks later, my client returned. The skin around her nail isn't red anymore and has healed up some. As I removed the material with my nail drill, my client wasn't in pain but uncomfortable. The nail is white, meaning it isn't in contact with the nail bed. My client's nails are very arched, so if I were to clip it across, the nail would end up twisted. Therefore, it's better to make a cut down the center and then simply clip it across. Here, I am making three cuts along her nail and then cutting across. This was not only a terrible sight for my client, but also made me really sad, as I know how long it's going to take for her nail to fully grow back. Fortunately though, there is no redness or bleeding, so this allows me to trim this part of her nail. After six weeks, my client is back for a correction, and here is her poor little pinky nail. It has already grown out some, which is great, uh, so now I will simply clean up some of the nail, of course that part that is not connected to her nail bed. 
These empty areas are great places for bacteria to build up and we don't want that. This mill definitely won't be seeing any coating for at least another two months. Therefore, I'm continuing today's correction on her other nails. With my nail drill, I'm taking off the color, thickness, and length as much as has grown out. Then I am simply cleaning up the cuticle area. After cleaning up the cuticle area, I'm dehydrating her nails, applying a non-acidic primer and a thin layer of a base coat. Once that has cured, I am taking a bead of poly gel and forming it with my brush. My client has nails that naturally grow upward. So most of the material I am focusing in the middle of her nail in order to mask the natural curve in the middle. As for the tips of her nails, I'm applying very little material. After applying and forming the poly gel, all that's needed is a little filing. Further, I'm cleaning the excess material that has built up underneath. I'm cleaning up any dust and further to our coating. As you can imagine, my client still doesn't want to bring too much attention to her nails, so we're coating them in a solid color. Have any of you noticed when applying a second layer of a dense black polish, it doesn't cure well? I usually have that problem with a thumbnail, so for the second layer, I mix the color a little bit with a top coat and it cures perfectly. On a few nails, we decided to do a simple marble design. Now just for our top coat, and here they are. In the meantime, we will be waiting for her nail to fully cure. 
I hope you all found this video helpful, and if you did, then please give it a big thumbs up, and until next time.